What's goody with y'all, man? You already know, man. Yo, what's up with y'all, man? Yo, this is Reef the Fleek. And this is Leaky Leak. And this is Reef Leak. Anime Horror Gang. Gang. What's good with y'all, man? Got another video, man. Today we're going to be reacting to Mr. Baller. Yo, man, shout out to Mr. Baller, man. You already know he's the GOAT, man. We love him so much over here, man. Yo, please go show him some love, man, because we always love watching his videos over here and stuff, mm -hmm. man. You already know that he always be coming up with some creepy videos and stuff, and we love enjoying them and love watching them with y'all and stuff, man. So please go show him some love. So please like, comment, subscribe, and join our big happy family. Yes, man. Join the family. Anime Heart Gang, man. Once you join the family, man, you're a Supreme Kai. You're a loser. You're a Supreme Loser, man. Mm -hmm. You already know, man. Join the family, man. And share our videos with everybody, man. Let everybody know about us, man, that you already know we were, we're your favorite nerdy boys over here on YouTube, man. Mm -hmm. We already got our one-year anniversary video coming up, man. You already got to be ready for that, man. Y'all, please get ready for that, man. Please subscribe to us. Share our videos, man. Please sit back. Relax, man, and let's be begin. Anime Heart Game. Family for life. All right, y'all. We got another one of Mr. Bones' videos. It's called These Spoiled Rich Kids Will Kill for Fun. Mm -hmm. And, like, y'all, I'm going to say this before we play the video. Like, See, people grew up different. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. people ain't mm -hmm. grew up with the best family background. And there's people that have been blessed to have these type of families and mm -hmm. stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, the ones that did grew up with a family that really took their life seriously and really wanted you to have the best. And it's like them type of kids be like, you know, mm -hmm. be doing too much and be trying to, like, do this and this and that and trying to, like ruin their family's name and it's like bro be happy that you've been blessed like that yeah. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like don't be the type of rich kid that oh you're gonna go out in public just starting treating people wrong and stuff and just yeah, doing stuff because your parents got money and stuff uh, it's like it's mm -hmm. cringy and it's like bro just because your parents got bread that's not your bread bro that's their bread but they just supporting you because mm -hmm. you're their child and it's like don't take opportunities like that don't be using your family's name just to be acting the way how you want to act and, like, be trying to do stuff that you think is right because your family got it like that. Mm -hmm. And, like, people like that, it's like, uh-uh-uh. Like, yeah. be happy that you got a family that's really supportive like that and really care because there's people out here that don't even have their families, bro, or even have a mom and a dad to even go to to talk about things with. They'll just be happy that they have them mm -hmm. in their life. They don't even care about the money. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, man, it's just sad that people really grew up with yeah, everything mm -hmm. and still treat their parents bad. Like, I don't mm -hmm. get that. Yeah. I don't get it. But I hey, didn't either. whatever's your story is your story. I feel like this is really going to be a deep video. Mm -hmm. So we're really going to like, you know, see what's the story about. Please go subscribe to Mr. Baller, man. You already know, show him some love and support. Please, um... Uh, Subscribe to us as well, man. Anime Hard Game, man. Let's get it, man. Mm -hmm. Today's story is about a crime so notorious it has been dubbed the crime of the century. But the reason for its notoriety has less to do with the crime itself and more to do with who committed it. But before mm -hmm. we get into that story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do and we upload once a week. So if that's of interest to you, please downgrade the Like Button's Netflix account so that you're forced <laughs> to sit through all the unskippable ads. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. Okay, let's get into today's story. Mmm, it's a ballin'! Mm. You the goat, man. Yeah, he is. Privileged. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Perfect title. <laughs> On the evening of Wednesday, May 21st, 1924, a man named Jacob Franks walked up the steps to his mansion. All right, he looked crispy. Mm -hmm. I like the drip. Okay. I like it too. I'm not going to lie, y'all. Me and Leaky Leak is the type of people. Like, we love fashion and stuff, but this is like mm -hmm. fire to us. Like, I would jive really go out in public and dress like this. I'm mm -hmm. not even going front. But people think this outfit's corny and it's not. It ain't. It's a classic man. Out Come mm -hmm. on, homie crispy. This probably my man. Let's see. <laughs> his door his butler opened it up welcomed him inside and jacob smiled at the butler and stepped in 
Jacob had just spent a long day at his office in Chicago, Illinois, doing uh. a big real estate deal, and now he was just happy to be home with his wife and his three kids. Jacob was an incredibly successful business person who had made a name for himself first in the early 1900s when he ran a bank that specialized in giving out these enormous loans. Uh. To the but it wasn't until he was named the president of the Rockford Watch Company and he expanded into real estate that he became outrageously wealthy. His fortune Man, in dang. today's dollars would have been around $70 million. Ooh, woo, woo. So well established in the business world in Chicago, he was trying to make a more conscious effort to spend mm. more time at home with his wife and kids. And so as soon as he walked what past his butler uh, right. his mansion, he hung up his hat and his jacket, and he went to find his wife, Flora, to tell her about an idea he had for a trip for that upcoming weekend. But hmm. when okay. Jacob found Flora, she was not remotely interested in talking about their weekend plans, because Flora was very worked up about their youngest son, Bobby. Uh, Bobby, hmm. who was 14 years old, was supposed to come home right after school, but it was now 6 p.m., and he still hadn't shown up, and wow. she had no idea where he was. And Jacob's reaction to this news was just to feel kind of aggravated. Bobby was generally a really good kid. He was a student at a prestigious boys' school right down the road, and his teacher was convinced that Bobby was the smartest kid in his entire grade. Bobby was a member of the school's debate team and mm -hmm. regularly beat the older kids. And Bobby was just a natural leader and very hardworking and kind. But Bobby could also be fairly irresponsible sometimes, mm -hmm. specifically in terms of coming home on time. This was not the first time that Bobby had... Oh, so he did Bobby. more than once. So Jacob told Flora, you know, don't worry about it. This is something Bobby does. He likely lost track of time. And as Jacob and Flora are having this discussion, Bobby's older brother came into the room and suggested to his dad, Jacob, that perhaps Bobby was across the street at Richard's house. Richard was Bobby's cousin playing tennis on their private mm. court. Richard mm. and Bobby were quite close, even though they were four years apart. Richard was 18, Bobby was 14, but they really bonded over tennis, and so that was something they did all the time. And so Jacob said he would go across the street and see if Bobby was there, and he also told his wife, Flora, to just continue to call around town and see if anybody knew where Bobby might be. And so Jacob left his mansion and began walking across the street towards Richard's family's mansion to see if his son was there. Now, this neighborhood that Jacob lived in was one of the most exclusive neighborhoods really in the entire country, but definitely within Chicago's city limits. Hmm. It was called South Kenwood, and basically imagine a street where every house that was is nice. a, That's a nice house. And every mansion mm -hmm. is home to some business tycoon or famous person. And all the families who lived in this neighborhood had a full staff of maids and butlers and drivers and fleets of private cars. I mean, these people who lived in South Kenwood were literally the richest of the rich. And so Jacob, he gets mm. across the street, he's standing in front of Richard's family's mansion, and he looks around the side and he can see the private tennis court where his son and Richard would always play. But it's totally vacant, and in fact, the house is just totally quiet. No one's home. When Jacob got back to his own home, he found his wife pacing around in the parlor looking really concerned. And so Jacob immediately asked her, you know, what'd you learn? What's going on? And she would tell Jacob that she had spoken to one of Bobby's friends who told her that Bobby had umpired a baseball game after school and had left to walk back home at around 5 p.m. What? The school hmm. and the baseball field where Bobby would have been was only about three blocks away from their home. And now it was 6.30 p.m. So it's been a Oh, man, a half don't tell me Bobby somebody... Supposedly began his walk home. And so by now, he certainly should be here, but of course he wasn't. At this point, Jacob went from feeling aggravated with his son to being concerned for his son's safety. Despite the fact that he's him. thinking, okay, well, my son is likely somewhere in this neighborhood in South Kenwood, one of the safest, richest, best places in the country. He's but still, it's like, okay, you say it's the safest and the best place in the... Even the not y'all, even the nicest neighborhoods could be mm -hmm. criminals in it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because mostly criminals would hit up spots like that. Mm -hmm. Like for example, you know Home Alone. Mm -hmm. Like when the bandits came into that nice neighborhood mm -hmm. and like they robbed all the nice houses and stuff. Like mm -hmm. still, y'all people could still go into them nice neighborhoods and still rob it. Y'all act like the hood ain't like a couple of blocks down the street from that place. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like in Buffalo, you can see a difference from. The nice part going into the bad part. 
mm-hmm. or going from the bad part into the nice parts. Yeah, and vice versa. So, and it's like y'all, I'm gonna tell y'all this. Me and Leaky Leak is going to make a video on seeing from the bad parts to the good parts, because you only gotta take one bus to go from the bad part to the good part. And trust mm-hmm. me, y'all, y'all gonna see a complete difference. Mm-hmm. And like, it's like, yo, me and Leaky Leak we difference. on the bus thinking like. Like, damn, yo, like, I really do want to go into these nice parts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, the nice parts look very beautiful. But, you know, there's some crooked people in them nice parts. <laughs> it ain't just the hood. There's some crooked people in the nice parts to get what they want to get so they can have that American dream. You know what I'm saying? But, y'all, I'm just being honest. I'm not letting, if I have kids, I'm not letting my kid out of my sights. Mm-hmm. I know you're supposed to let your kid be a kid and, like, let them go and experience stuff like that. But it's like, I just can't be that type of parent to let my kid just walk freely back home. Yeah. Even though the home is close to the school, mm-hmm. I can't let my kid just walk back home by their self. I and, feel like... And a lot of people know us as well for being I feel rich. like, if anything, no matter where see you're in, there's always going to be a crime of opportunity, no matter what. Yeah, and it's like, y'all, like, for real, like, you're telling me that... Mm-hmm. Nobody has not been like, okay, you've been working with people and you be like, oh, yeah, you're not this and this and that. You be, you know, because trust me, there be some times that you might be making more money than somebody. You be, I'd be like, dude, you don't got it like me, man. Like, or, mm-hmm. or it might be somebody that you really took, um, that took offense to you mm-hmm. or, or just don't like you for some reason. Yeah. And they be like, oh, since you want to be that type of person, okay, do this and this and that. Mm-hmm. So, like, y'all, but please, if you're a type of parent, like, please, please watch y'all kids and make sure y'all get them from school. It's not that hard. It really is. It's not good. that hard. Let them take the bus back or go pick them up. I can't let my kid just walk anywhere. No. Nope. Like, I need no. to know where you're at. Mm-hmm. I need to know where you're at. He's got to be okay, but I really want to find him. See, if you go pick them up or let them take the bus, even though they didn't have that stuff back then, y'all had cars to go and pick them up. Mm-hmm. I'm not letting my kid walk one or two blocks from home. Basically, look around the neighborhood for Bobby. When the state senator friend arrived at Jacob's house, the two men left and began walking down the street lined with mansions, making their way towards the school where Bobby supposedly had been umpiring. And when they got there, they saw there was no baseball game happening and the school was dark and closed for the night. But Jacob and his friend decided that, you know, maybe it was possible that after umpiring this game, when Bobby had begun his walk home, maybe he had taken a detour into the school to get something, and then perhaps the doors got shut and locked on him. And so Jacob and his friend Mm. went to the school and looked for a way to basically break into the school. And sure enough, they would find an open window, they'd open it up, they would climb inside, and they would search the entire school, but Bobby was not in there. At this point, Jacob was really starting to panic. His friend was trying to calm him down, but Jacob is now thinking nah. something is terribly wrong with my son. And so the two men actually ran from the school back to Jacob's house. And when they went inside, Jacob immediately called out to his wife to see if maybe she had located Bobby. Oh my God. But when he called Flora's name, there was no response. And so Jacob. See, y'all? That's why. Letting your kids walk from school, anything can happen. It mm-hmm. doesn't matter if you're one block away. It really don't. Something can happen during them couple of blocks that somebody could do something to your kid. Mm-hmm. It don't matter how close you are. Something can happen in between from the school and to the house with your mm-hmm. kid. Mm-hmm. Like somebody could just grab them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or lure them somewhere like, yo, come over here real quick. Like, nah, mm-hmm. fam. Mm-hmm. And then you need to train your kids Stranger not to talk danger. to strangers. Stranger danger. Y'all, please teach y'all kids not to talk to strangers because strangers will take advantage of little kids because, you Mm -hmm. know, little kids are so nice and they don't know nothing. Yeah. And they don't know a lot. Mm -hmm. Anything can happen. Y'all, anything can happen from the school to the house during them, during that walkway. Anything can happen. Mm Because trust me, when we was going to school, people walk from home to school. And trust me, we've seen sometimes that people walk from the school to their house and people got jumped. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, like, trust me, like, it's dangerous. Don't let your kids just walk out here freely. Towards the parlor, which is where mm. they had last seen Flora before they left. And when they walked in there, 
they found Flora lying on the ground, totally lifeless, with the phone off the hook right next to her hand. And so Jacob and the oh, center of the show. Right they begin shaking Flora, and suddenly she wakes up with a gasp, and she looks up at Jacob and just begins sobbing hysterically. And after Jacob finally calmed her down, she would tell him that after they had left to go to the school, she had received a phone call. And at first, she thought it was Bobby calling mm. to check in. But when she answered it, it wasn't Bobby. It was a man's voice she didn't recognize who told her that Bobby had been kidnapped. He was safe hmm. for now. Oh. If they went to police, something terrible would happen. Yo. This mystery man also told Flora that they would be in touch soon with more information, and then they hung up. See, someone kid so man. Man. She had fainted, and that was why they found her on the ground. That night, Jacob, Flora, and the state senator friend stayed up late going over, you know, what they should do. Of course they wanted to go to police, but this felt like a credible threat that Bobby could be harmed if they did that. And so they just went back and forth and back and forth over how to handle this horrible situation. But by 2 a.m., they had made a decision. The state senator had some close friends and connections in the police department, and so they decided that they would go talk to the police, but they would swear them to secrecy so the kidnapper or kidnappers wouldn't know the police were investigating. And so, a few hours later, when the police department opened up, Jacob and the state senator friend went to the police, they spoke to the highest ranking officer who was sworn to secrecy, and then that morning, the police would begin a quiet investigation into Bobby's kidnapping. At the same time this investigation was beginning, on the morning of May 22nd, 1924, a man named Morton D. Ballard drove mm. through downtown Chicago in a luxury car known as a Willis Knight. Mm. He pulled this luxury car into a parking lot right next to a rental car company, and after parking the car, Morton got out, he went inside of the shop, and he handed the keys over to the clerk behind the desk. The clerk would ask Morton, you know, how did it go with your rental car? And Morton would say, oh, it was perfect, went totally fine. After that, Morton thanked the mm. clerk, he turned around and walked outside where another luxury car was waiting for him, mm. being driven by his good friend, Lewis Mason. And once Morton had climbed inside, mm. the two men smiled and drove off and disappeared into traffic. That same mm. morning, Jacob and Flora received a letter from the kidnapper or kidnappers demanding... Wait a minute, look what it said. Um, Northwest University Archive. Real photo of the ransom. Oh, this is it. Dear sir, as you know, as you no know, doubt you know by this time your son has been kidnapped. Allow us to assure you that he is at present well and safe. You need to fear no physical harm for him. No physical harm for him. Provide you live up carefully to the following instructions and such others as you will receive in the future communications. Mm. Yo, yo. So that's man, that's really yo. Man. People do not play. I'm telling you, ten thousand. And you don't know, you don't know if they were stalking your house. Hmm. You don't know that people really do that. Yeah, people could really go into the nice neighborhoods and see who lives in that house and see, oh, they got a kid. Oh, we're gonna get them mm -hmm. so they could give us some money. Mm -hmm. People really go out here being demons, bro. Yeah. <laughs> there is demons out here. Mm. Wait a minute. Okay, okay. Wait a minute. Secure before noon today ten thousand dollars. See, it's about money. Mm -hmm. This money must be comp wait a minute, composed entirely on, on, of old bills of the following demonstrate wait a minute. Denominations. Two thousand and twenty dollar bills, eight thousand and fifty dollar bills. They must must wait a minute. The money must be old. Any attempt in including new or marked bills were a reminder of an entire venture. Oh, shoot. Man, yeah, so they're serious. Hmm. If, if one little thing is off, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Marked bills, and if they gave this money over, they would get their son back. And immediately, hmm. Jacob went to the bank and got the money. But before he could actually deliver the money to the kidnappers at the location they had specified in this letter, oh, man. the police, who were quietly investigating discovered a clue that would break the case wide open. It would take over a week to unravel this bizarre clue, but it all started to come together when the police brought in Morton D. Ballard and Lewis Mason for questioning. 
Here is the shocking story that detectives were finally able to piece together mm. about what uh. happened to Bobby Franks. On May 7th, mm. 1924, so two weeks before Bobby went missing, Morton D. Ballard walked into a hotel in Chicago called the Morrison and rented room 1031. He would tell the front desk that he wanted them to hold his mail for him, and over the next couple of days, Morton would come in and he would get his mail from the front desk, but he didn't appear to ever actually go up to his room. Finally, a suspicious maid at the Morrison Hotel, who had been going into room 1031 every day to clean it, only to discover that Morton was not in there and the room was totally untouched and clean already, she went in one morning and saw Morton was not in there, and she would actually just open up one of Morton's suitcases that he had left inside. And instead of the suitcase containing clothes or toiletries, it just contained a bunch of random library books. As it happened, after this maid found this... Okay, I know, I know, okay, I know you're cleaning, you're a maid, and you're still trying to clean and do your job, but why is you looking at my stuff? I've... I feel like it's kind of like suspicious though. Yeah, I know it's suspicious. There, though, I know you're curious, but it's like I want to go in somebody's room and, and like you know. Yeah. Uh, I know, but, but you should be curious. Like, how come this room haven't been touched and there's a suitcase here? Mm -hmm. He did not claim his luggage and he didn't pay the bill. He just kind of vanished on May 9th, oh. so just a couple of days after Morton first booked that room at the Morrison Hotel. Morton also opened a bank account in Chicago. He also made his first appearance at that car rental company where he asked for the Willis Knight car. The rental company would not just let anybody take a Willis Knight car. You needed a reference to show that you were someone who could pay for this type of uh. And so Morton's friend, Lewis Mason, would give him that reference and allow him to rent the Willis Knight car. About a week and a half later, on May 21st, so the day Bobby went missing, Morton and Lewis were driving around South Kenwood in their Willis Knight car when they spotted Bobby by himself walking down the road. Now, Lewis recognized Bobby, and he knew that Bobby was an incredible tennis player, and Lewis had a question for Bobby about a particular tennis racket. And so Lewis, who was in the front seat of the car, told Morton, who was driving, to pull over so Lewis could talk to Bobby. And so Morton pulled over, Lewis rolled his window down, he called over to Bobby, Bobby came over, and before long, Lewis and Bobby were talking about this. See, y'all, mm -hmm. train y'all kids not to talk to strangers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is this is a pure reference of why you shouldn't let your kids talk to strangers. Mm -hmm. Like, y'all, please tell y'all kids not to talk to strangers. If y'all do have kids or if y'all planning to have kids, please teach them not to talk to random people because mm -hmm. you don't know people's intentions. I know you're trying to teach trying to not smother your kids or any of that but you gotta protect them from this at some point because you're not going to be with them all the time mm -hmm. like you gotta teach them things that they need to know so they can survive by themselves mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like teach them that like tell them when they're going to school don't bother people mm -hmm. don't get into nothing crazy and don't talk to strangers while you're in public mm -hmm. that should be the first thing you should have told them if he's walking from school to home you should have told them that like, yo, don't talk to anybody mm -hmm. that you don't know. Nope. Don't talk to strangers because you don't know their intentions mm -hmm. at all. Like, go, like, go, just come to school and come straight home. Mm -hmm. And if you want to go to your friend's house, let your mother know because mm -hmm. I'm not going to be at home all day. So let your mother know that before you just start going somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like, don't just, it's just, man. Don't be nonchalant with your kids. It's just, this is just crazy. Don't be nonchalant with your kids. I told you, from school to home, something could happen in between that gap. And it did. And it did. It's tennis racket. And then when that conversation naturally wrapped up, Lewis offered Bobby a ride the rest of the way home. See, teach your kids not to talk to strangers and be comfortable with people. Lewis climbed into the back seat, Morton stayed in the driver's seat, Dang, Bobby man. Inside and sat in the front seat. And then once those two were situated, Morton pulled away from the curb and began driving towards Bobby's house. And as they were driving to Bobby's house, Bobby just kind of continued talking about this tennis racket because that was the thing they were talking about. And as he was mid sentence See, while they're talking about a tennis racket, your kid just literally hopped up in the car with a stranger, mm -hmm. not knowing nothing. Mm -hmm. And they know damn well that that little kid was vulnerable. Because you know with little kids, if you talk about something that they like... They just don't think about that. 
Mm-hmm. Little kids don't think about that. No. Nope. Like, you could literally be talking about something about somebody, and you could be just hopping in their car, not realizing that you're really hopping up in their car. Mm-hmm. Like, y- y- y'all, please be careful with y'all kids. Please tell them not to talk to strangers, because this is, all this wouldn't have happened if they would have been on him mm-hmm. about not talking to strangers. Reached into his pocket, pulled out a chisel, and then lunged forward and began smashing Bobby in the back of the head over and over. As Bobby is screaming in pain and trying to protect himself, Lewis lunges forward, grabs Bobby, drags him into the back seat, yeah. and then holds him down, pulls a rag out of his pocket, and jams it into Bobby's throat. And then he Yo! Goes, holds it shut until Bobby goes still. After that, Lewis kind of grimaced at all of Bobby's blood. Oh my all God. The Bobby down onto the floorboards below, and then Lewis calmly climbed back into the front seat and sat down. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, Morton has not remotely reacted to what's just happened. This is just business as usual. Morton and Lewis did not go to Bobby's house, but instead drove towards Indiana. And on their drive to Indiana, they would stop at a roadside restaurant and eat hot dogs and root beers with their car parked right near this restaurant. With Bobby Can you Bobby imagine that? Laying out on the floorboards of the back seat. Morton and Lewis would eventually get into Indiana and they would head to this particular forest yeah. that Morton was familiar with because he was a bird watcher and often came out here. And when they got to this forest, they parked in this clearing, they got out, they checked on Bobby and confirmed that he was dead. So they pulled him out, they stripped all his clothes off of him, they rolled him up in a road. Oh! A pipe that sat underneath some railroad tracks in the swampy area. So a little kid, bro! Inside of it. And then they got back in the car. This is just sad, man. At which point, Morton called Bobby's mother, Flora, and informed her that her son was kidnapped but alive, even though he wasn't, and don't call the police, we'll be in touch soon. That night, Morton and Lewis would burn all of the clothes they had stripped off of Bobby. That's they would also sad. Clean the interior of their Willis Knight rental car. That's room. sad. They would play a game of cards together before going to bed. The next day, May 22nd, so the same day that Mm -mm -mm. police began their quiet investigation Mm -mm -mm. into Bobby's kidnapping, Morton and Lewis would send that letter to Jacob and Flora demanding $10,000 for the safe return of Bobby. It's not bad enough you just killed him. You want money out (laughs) See, y'all, that's why money, man, it's like people would do so much things for money. Like, Mm -hmm. y'all, please, please. Oh, my God. It's like... It's not enough that you literally took a life. You literally tried to make bread off of that, too. Bro, it's like... And it's like, bro, y'all just... Oh, oh, that is so disgusting. That is disgusting, To a little man. kid, that bro. disgusting right to there, To a little man. kid, bro. ...ransom money. Bobby's body was discovered. In fact, that day, he was discovered. A walker was cutting through the woods in Indiana and saw Bobby in the pipe. And so when Morton and Lewis realized that, you know, the jig is up, the family's never going to pay for their son because he's dead, they just returned their Willis Knight rental car and went back to their normal lives as if nothing had ever happened. But unbeknownst to him, Morton had accidentally dropped his eyeglasses right next to Bobby's body when they dumped him in the woods. Mm. Morton's eyeglasses were very unique. In fact, there was only one store in the world that sold this particular kind of eyeglasses. Hmm. And so so the that's what the... Oh, that's what you get! Yeah. That's what you that's get! What, mm-hmm. Just because you dropped something at that place, they wouldn't even that's know. That's downfall right there. That's what you get! That's what you get! Found, hmm. They would also find these glasses, and that was the big clue. Because these glasses led detectives to the store where they were And you bought some joints mm-hmm. that literally they they not even uh, made a lot particular glasses were sold to Morton. And when detectives went to Morton, Morton immediately pointed the finger at Lewis. Oh! <laughs> oh so he ran it on his boy! Both Morton and Lewis would confess to police that they murdered Bobby. When it's time yeah. That's what you get! <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is priceless. You did all that and you left your frames out there? <laughs> yeah. That is what you get, though. Mm. Ain't that something? 
Ain't that something? But far more shocking than what Morton and Lewis had done was who they were. Because Morton and Lewis were not their real names. The two oh. men who killed Bobby Franks were rich kids just like Bobby who lived in South Kenwood. They created two fake names, Morton D. Ballard and Lewis Mason, and then they booked room 1031 at the Morrison Hotel. Now, they had no intention of actually staying at this hotel, and so they just left that suitcase full of books inside of the room to make it appear like they were staying there. But in reality... Wait a minute, so y'all left it there, so if you do go and do something, they could go to that place instead of going to the actual place that y'all went to. Hmm. So y'all had this plan the whole time. Yeah, this is literally premeditated right here. connected to their fake personas and so after booking this room they began sending mail to morton d ballard and lewis mason at the morrison hotel room 1031 and then after collecting that mail which served as a sort of proof of legal name and address they were able to open a bank account in chicago they dumped some money into that and then again they used their proof of legal name and address to rent that willis knight car and then used money from their phony bank account to pay for it and then once they had their luxury car it was time to go kill in reality morton was actually a 19 year old prodigy named nathan leopold he spoke five languages he had already graduated from college and he was a nationally respected ornithologist which is someone who studies birds nathan's iq was so high it literally couldn't be measured his father was the president of a very successful steamship company and nathan was planning to attend harvard university in the fall to get yet another college degree and Lewis was actually 18-year-old Richard Loeb, who was Bobby's cousin and one of his best friends. Bobby and Richard played tennis together all the time in Richard's private court, which is where Bobby's father went first to go looking for his son. Wow. Like Nathan, Richard was also a genius. Like what I told y'all, in them nice neighborhoods, there's some crooked people. Mm -hmm. There's really crooked people. Everybody in them nice neighborhoods is not making money solid, like legit. Mm -hmm. Some of them is doing some crooked stuff to keep making money like that. Mm -hmm. They're crooks. Some of them is the most crooks. He was the youngest mm. person ever to have graduated from the University of Michigan. He graduated at 17 years old. And to celebrate the occasion, Richard's father, who in today's dollars was worth about $175 million, he was a retired vice president for the major retail store Sears, he bought Richard a custom golf course. He built him his own golf course. That was his graduation present. And yeah. at the time of Bob Bro, y'all could have took over y'all family's company, y'all. Y'all did all I that. Y'all like graduated all from college. Y'all was smart. Y'all parents is already rich, so they could pass on their legacy to y'all. All y'all gifts. All y'all ever got in life. This is how y'all do. Like, there's really people out here that's really doing this. Y'all, that's the thing that's really crazy. There's people this, out here man. actually doing this. At all. And they got everything. That's what I hate when I see people like, people like our age that have rich parents. And they just be dogging their parents. They be just tarnishing their names, throwing their names in the mud, acting stupid. I'm like, y'all, if I just had a quarter of that, I'll just be the most happiest person in the world. Because mm -hmm. I feel like, dude, a lot of people don't see money like that in a lifetime, mm -hmm. y'all. And have good parents like that. Why would y'all ruin something that could really benefit y'all? Like, think about it. Your dad's owning this. You think your dad ain't going to pass it on to you? He just got to teach you it. You're literally getting handed something. You're literally getting your life handed to you. A lot of people have to work hard hmm. to get to that point and work hard. And it's crazy because the ones that's really working hard and really going to nine to fives to make sure that their dreams come true are really working hard. But people like y'all get stuff handed to y'all and y'all just destroy it. Y'all literally had so much money that the y'all kids' kids get eat. Mm. Ain't that something I like, do? That's a that's that's just wild. Man. And you be seeing all these celebrities' kids out here just doing the most wildest stuff. Mm. The most wildest stuff. 
And I'd be like, y'all just I don't just care. I'm just speechless right now. So now like, y'all just don't care. I don't even know what to ask? Ask them first. Y'all just don't, don't care. Law school studying to become a lawyer. Nathan and Richard would very proud. You literally got your life handed to you. They didn't kill Bobby to get money out of his parents. Nathan and Richard were fabulously wealthy. The money meant nothing. Instead, they had come up with the scheme and killed Bobby because of their belief in the philosopher Nietzsche's concept of supermen, men whose superiority allows them to rise above all ordinary rules, ethics, and laws. What? Nathan and yeah, and, and that's really a thing, too. People that, that, that think that they're, like, rich like that don't think, think that everything in society, like laws and all that, don't abide by them. And it's like, there's really people that's out here that got bread that really thinks like that. Like, they be like, I'm the richest person in this room. Why is I'm standing in this line? And there's like 10 people ahead of me. I should go first. Dude, you're living in the real world. You're living in the real world. Nobody don't care that you're rich. Mm, no. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's really rich people out here that thinks the law don't divide by them. Mm. And they think they can just do whatever. This is just... This is just crazy, man. <laughs> yeah. This is literally a Karen before a Karen. I <laughs> just feel like that. This is literally a Karen before a Karen. So much better than everybody else in the world that if they wanted to kill someone, they should be able to. Literally, there's people that thinks like that. That got bread. Richard confessed. They were put under arrest, but a chauffeur was allowed to come to the police station and drop off silk pajamas for them to wear in custody. And instead of being held in a cell, they were allowed to stay in a hotel. But ultimately, they both were sentenced to life in prison. Bobby's family never recovered from his murder, and his father, Jacob, would die just four years after his son died. Damn. That he would be murdered in prison in 1936 by another inmate. Hmm. And as for Richard, he would serve his time and get paroled and then die of natural causes in 1971. Today, the wow. murder of Bobby Franks is often referred to as the crime of the century. Hmm. So, wow, y'all. You know what's so crazy? I just feel like if they, if there's people out here that do have it like that, don't just go out here thinking that you could just do whatever you want. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like there's still people out here that's really trying their best. Like, I don't like people. Like, people like this just gets on my nerve because it's like, mm -hmm. dude, just because you got money doesn't mean you're just going to start living your life and treating people the way how you want to treat people and see the way how you think life should be. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because, y'all, there was literally an Instagram video. It was a woman cleaning out a car. Mm -hmm. Like, a car for these people or pumping their gas. It was either one. And you know what these people did in the car? They had it like that. They just literally gave, got money. They just had a little thin stack of money. And threw her out there at the window, at her on the ground, and she, and you know what? Th that made me feel so sad, bro, because she really was crying, bro. Mm. She really was crying, mm. like, yo, this how really rich people really treat you, people that guy like that really treat you. Mm. She was literally crying. That got me so mad, bro, because it's like, how can you just s treat somebody like that, another human being like that? And then I know people be making videos on showing that they're caring for people, doing book bag um releases for people for poor communities that can't afford book bags and school supplies. And I know they be giving that stuff out. But it's like, why would you want to show that on camera, people being down bad like that? Hmm. I wouldn't be the type of person to show people down bad like that. Because I feel like I don't want people's families to be seeing that. This is just sad, right? That's disgusting, yo. Mm -hmm. That's really disgusting to me. I can't just sit there and show myself giving a hundred thousand dollars to a homeless person and using it for views. Just do it from the kindness of your heart. You don't have to record everything. Mm. And I hate people that thinks that just because they got money, rules don't abide by them. They can make up their own rules and just be doing whatever they want. Mm. Like, bro, like, you grew up spoiled, bro, and you think you could do everything you want. They the type of people in school to be like, man, bro, my dad got it like that, bro. I could just say whatever I want. They the type that's just going to cuss out the teacher. Mm -hmm. They'll cuss out the teacher, 
and they think their parents is going to save them from everything. Mm. Y'all, man, man. Is, man. People like that is sickening. That's going to do it. Sickening. Of That's episode, disgusting. Mm -hmm. Please downgrade the like button. Oh, man. That video got me so mad. And then you killed the innocent kid so for fun. He don't got nothing to do with y'all. Y'all just planned on doing it. That was just premeditated right there. So that's sick, dude. Mm -hmm. That is sick. Yeah, y'all. Shout out to Mr. Ballin, man. Mm -hmm. You already know. We love you so much, Mr. Ballin, man. Please go support mm -hmm. him with all his other podcasts and his um channels and stuff like that. Please go share his videos mm -hmm. as well, man. Yo, please subscribe to us as well, subscribe man. To us. Anime Heart Gang, mm -hmm. man. You already know, man. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. And um, we love y'all so much, man. Please share our videos as well, man. It, man, we gotta go. Cause this is yeah, if I keep on staying I, on this video, it's gonna it's gonna get me mad, piss me off even more. Yeah. So mm -hmm. y'all, we see y'all next time. See you next time. To the next reaction. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> I love we love y'all so much. Mm -hmm. But bye. This is disgusting. Mm -hmm. Bye.